All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video, we're going to be looking at must draft sleepers. So we're going to be looking at guys further down the board, even some guys that might go undrafted, some guys I think you could probably pick up in the end of your draft even. Um, one thing you'll notice that on these player cards that you'll see, we'll have the Yahoo ranks right, ne right next to them to kind of just compare them to the ADP as well to see where these guys are ranked preseason and where they're being drafted right now um, in current fantasy hockey drafts. Uh, also, be sure to check us out on Twitch right now. Uh, you know, we have a betting show going on from 12 to 1, lines at lunch, but also leading up to the NHL season, we'll be doing um, some things after dark, I guess you could say 5 to 6 p.m., 7 p.m., doing some NHL futures talks um, and just more fantasy hockey talk as well. So let's get into the video for today. All right, so the first guy we're looking at, someone that is on a lot of fantasy hockey players' lists already, is Pavel Zak on the Boston Bruins. You know, everyone's looking to fill the void for Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, and I think Pavel Zak is the perfect guy to do that. He is currently slotted in as the number one center on this team right now. He'll probably be a fixture on the first power play as well. That first power play consists of Brad Marchand, Jake DeBrusque, uh, David Pasternak and then Charlie McAvoy so obviously uh, that will bring him some good fortune as well for sure he also only played about a minute and 43 seconds per game on the man advantage last year uh, we'll definitely see that increase this year considering how much Boston was on the power play last season he'll go from playing about 16 minutes per game which was last season to about 18 this year um, his shot total will also increase. I'd be very surprised. You know, he had 131 shots on goal last year. You look at guys who played with Pasternak. I know Pasternak had like 400 shots last season. But Bra um, Patrice Bergeron, excuse me, was consistently around 225, 250 shots. So I think he can eclipse the 200 shot mark this season as well. And the residuals will, with Pasta will just go nuts as well. You know, he's been a 40 to 60 goal goal scorer for the past four to five seasons consistently. Um, we've seen Bergeron get a, lot, a ton of assists off that, mainly because of Patrice Bergeron. I'm sure we'll see Pasternak regress a little bit. Probably won't score 60 goals, but still in that 40 to 50 goal range. Um, he's a high enough skill player to do it on his own as well. And then if you look at last season to some of these forwards, out of the guys who played 1,000 minutes on the Bruins, uh, Zaka was sixth in Corsi 4 per 60, but then you take away Krejci and Bergeron, who are in that top six as well, then he becomes fourth. He'll be handling the puck a lot more. I think Jim Montgomery is starting to have a lot of faith in this guy as well. He's a great OHL, like junior hockey player. Hasn't really found his, didn't really find his role in New Jersey, but 57 points career high last year. I think we could definitely see him get up to 60 this season. All right, the next guy we're looking at, Connor Brown on the Edmonton Oilers. Obviously, moving over to this team this year, they signed him at the league min of 775,000. More of a prove it year for Connor Brown. So, you like to look at these players um, in this situation right now. You look at his season prior to last year because he got traded to Washington and then didn't really play much, obviously. Played 11, played like four games, I think, before he got hurt, but hasn't played in 11 months. So, his recovery has really. It's been long enough for him to get going again uh, when the season starts for the Edmonton Oilers. But his season before, last 64 games played, 10 goals and 29 assists, um, 121 shots, and his shooting percentage was relatively low. Still a pretty pretty skilled player, I would say. Always around the 30 to 35 point range, double digit goals as well. It was the same thing in Ottawa as it was in Toronto. You know, on a new team now with the Edmonton Oilers, played with McDavid uh, in Erie for two seasons, which I think is big. You know, we're seeing um, some reunions, I guess, more this year from guys who played uh, OHL, QMJHL together. Played with Hyman on the Leafs as well. Very realistic scenario that he ends up on a line with one of these guys. Uh, could definitely be the first line right now with Connor McDavid and Evander Kane, which will be great for him. He'll get power play two time. And to be honest, you might see him on the first power play as Jay Woodcroft tries to figure out who's the best guy to fit on that role. I think Ryan Nugent Hopkins obviously has that solidified role right now, but you never know. You might see some of these other new faces on that first power play too. But the one one good thing about him, he'll play on the penalty kill. So he'll be on the ice a lot. You know, there's a guy that in his last season with Ottawa, he was on the ice 20 minutes per game. Now, will he be in the same scenario or situation this year? Probably not, but I could see him 18 minutes per game for sure with all the different situations that he's capable of playing in. We saw Zach, Zach Hyman come in under the same light and explode for his best two seasons yet, including an 83-point season last year. Is he going to have 83 points this year? Probably not, but his current ADP right now, 162. His Yahoo rank before the season was 900. So if you're getting him at that ADP, I think it's, you know, relatively realistic to expect about a 40 to 50 point season in the scenario that he's in right now with how good this Edmonton Oilers team is and how good their special teams are. All right, so the next guy we're looking at, Riley Smith on the Pittsburgh Penguins, his ADP 165 right now. His Yahoo rank before the season 131. I think his rank uh, kind of depends on when Jake Gensel comes back and his ADP as well. Right now, it seems like Jake Gensel will probably miss at least the first month of the season. He had surgery, I think, in early August, and his timetable was about 12 to 14 weeks. So I think that lines up perfectly for about a month. So Riley Smith has ample amount of time to really get himself solidified in this lineup. 
he might not be on that first line with Crosby. Right now, you know, hopeful as fantasy hockey owners, as a guy who who I want to be one of my sleepers this year, Riley Smith, to play with Sidney Crosby because we've seen him, you know, make players so much better. Obviously, Jake Gensel, super skilled player, but I think it certainly helped him when he entered into the league playing with Sidney Crosby. And then, obviously, the claim to fame of Chris Kunitz. Sidney Crosby pretty much made this guy's whole entire career. So, not that Riley Smith hasn't had a career before this. Speaking of last year, too, obviously on the Vegas Golden Knights, for the Stanley Cup winning team, he was third in expected goals for throughout the regular season on this team. So he can create chances on his own as well. And then adding that, you know, playing on a line with either Malkin or Crosby, he'll definitely be able to be a high point producer on this team, probably around the 50 to 60 point um, range. Last year, you know, 26 goals, 56 points, only 10 on the power play. Now, that's the one thing with him in this situation right now. Will he find himself on that first power play? It'll be interesting to see kind of what Ricard Raquel can do on that first power play in that role, if he'll be able to keep up um, on this first power play with, you know, the likes of Chris Letang, Eric Carlson, Malkin, and then Crosby as well. But if not, he'll be playing on that second power play, getting opportunities to play uh, with some of the other forwards on this team. Uh, you know, there's some young guys on this team as well that I think he can exploit some good point production from. So he's definitely a guy I'm looking at as a sleeper as I start my fantasy hockey draft. All right, so the next sleeper we're looking at and one of my favorite candidates for this season because right now it seems like he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. So if you're in a deep league, definitely pay attention to Ryan Johansson. Now in the Colorado Avalanche, uh, slotted in as the second line center on this team right now. You know, this team isn't super deep. They had to fill some holes this year after, you know, moving Alex Newhook, losing some guys the year before that. And I think he's in a great position to succeed this year. You know, he had just 28 points last season uh, with the Nashville Predators. Obviously, only played about half the year with an, with an injury. Um, but the year before that, he had 63 points and 26 goals. I can easily see him getting back up to that 50-point range on this team as a second-line center. There's going to be other players that are going to have to produce simply enough. This is his 15th year in the NHL, so a little bit of wear and tear for sure. Um, but I think he's in a perfect spot to bounce back nicely, and he's done that in his career um, before. You know, his 20 to 21 season, he had just 22 points in 48 games. Next year, 26 goals, 63 point season. And then his first season in Nashville as well, he had just 34 points. The next year, he had a 60 plus point season uh, right back at it again. His shooting percentage last year is still pretty high, around 14%, uh, but we've regularly seen him around the like 100 to 120 shot range. Last year, he had just about 80 shots, obviously playing half the year or a little bit more than half the year doesn't really help in that opinion. But as the second line center on this team, I think we could definitely see him get up to 130 shot total and another 20 plus goal season. You know, you look at the second line centers that have been a part of this team over the past two years. Last year, JT Confer was in that role for a majority of the year, finished with about 50 points. And then you look at Nazem Kadri the year before that, he finished with 86 points. Now, is he going to get up to 86 points and be the same kind of player point producer as Nazem Kadri? Probably not. But I think there's a good middle there between him and Confer, about 60 points. I don't think there's any reason why you don't think Johansson can be on your fantasy team right now. And his current rank is 545, like I said, going undrafted in a lot of these leagues. If you're in a deep league, this is definitely a guy that you can pick up later on you know centers aren't that valuable in fantasy hockey there's a lot of them and this is a perfect example why all right so the next guy we're going to be looking at on the nashville predators and that's gustav nyquist i know this guy has really he's been a literal suitcase the definition of it uh, in the nhl over the past two seasons i would say or like three or four seasons like obviously he had those years in columbus but last year he only played about half the season uh but yeah 51 games played just 11 goals and 16 assists one power play point I, on this Nashville Predators team, you know, they've they've got their top line of Ryan O'Reilly, Philip Forsberg, and it seems like Nyquist will be slotted on that as the season gets started here. Um, but there's so many other young players. Uh, Andrew Burnett's going to have to li- rely on some of these veterans to, to produce points, and I think Nyquist is a perfect example of that. We've seen him do that two years ago with Columbus. He had 60 points, um, and you look at the line that he's potentially going to be playing on this year, uh, it's a decent amount of skill, and that's still a pretty solid first line for sure. Even if he gets bumped down to that second line too with Cody Glass and Philip Tomasino, I think he can help those, those young guys kind of break into this league and, and be kind of the driver of offense on one of those lines too. He'll be on the second power play as well. Right now, obviously, I don't think they have a solidified first power play so he'll probably get some chances on that first power play and the time will be split I don't think we'll see as heavy as a split as like Edmonton obviously their first first power play plays like the entire time same with like Pittsburgh we'll probably see this season I think we won't see that in Nashville I think they'll do a lot of testing at the beginning of the season to see where their true offensive talent lies and Andrew Burnett coming in as coach, I think that only helps this Nashville team be able to produce, you know, have a little bit more of an offensive game plan. I think Gustav Nyquist still has some left in the tank. And right now, you know, his rank 615th, also going undrafted, um, left winger as well. So the wing, winger position a little bit tougher to find later on in the draft. So if you're kind of handcuffed and have to take someone, I think this is a perfect guy you can take a, a risk on. 
All right, so the last guy on my must-draft sleepers list, someone who is definitely going draft at this point, but has one of the highest ranks out of these six players that I've been talking about here, and it's Jonathan Drouin, also on the Colorado Avalanche, but he also is on the first line now with Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen. And, and, you know, that was solidified even more. Nick McKinnon went back to Halifax uh, to get his jersey retired, and he said to the local newspaper there that he has started and will be playing on a line with Jonathan Drouin to start the season. So that's obviously great confidence for those people who have put some stock into Jonathan Drouin, like myself. I know it's crazy that another team's giving this guy another chance after kind of what he's done in Montreal. And what he did in Tampa, too, it wasn't all that bad. If you look at his, from his last year with Tampa to his second year in Montreal, he was consistently around the 40 to 50 point range, which isn't that bad considering how much slander this guy took. And I think you can expect a lot more playing with Nathan McKinnon, a guy that was one of the best uh, junior hockey teams, I would say, in the process, like probably like 10, like 15 years when these two guys were playing together. They had an incredible team, made a lot, guy, made a lot of guys look better than they actually were. Maybe Jonathan Drouin was one of those guys, but still, he's back on a line with Nathan McKinnon where he was scoring 100-plus points in back-to-back seasons, producing at an insane rate. Now, will he have that this year? No, but at his current ADP and his rank, I don't think there's any re- any reason you don't want to take him considering a 40 to 50 point season if he plays 82 games is probably his floor you know playing on a guy playing with a guy like Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen Miko Rantanen over 50 goals last season as well like I think he's just in the perfect scenario to kind of explode this season break out bounce back whatever you want to call it I think Durant could definitely be fully back in this season and someone that could really help you in your fantasy hockey team all right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of this episode and the must-draft sleepers for the upcoming fantasy hockey season. Let me know who you're targeting later on in drafts. You know there's so many guys to keep your eye on, so I'm curious to hear what you guys hear your thoughts. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one for a mock draft.